we should really have a, a segment for this, but it is uh, Republicans not being able to help themselves when they go after uh, Kamala Harris. Here uh, in the latest edition of... Um, mm, we this is asked why you guys don't get invited places. We asked you in Congress not to uh, go on television and make attacks like this. We didn't want you to be overtly racist, folks. Here is... All Republicans looking up overtly in the dictionary. <laughs> exactly. Here's Re Representative Claudia Tenney, Republican from New York's 24th District, actually making Larry Kudlow have to give a qualifying statement. The views expressed here are not necessarily held by management. Go ahead. Well, Kamala Harris, she has a horrible record. She cackles. Uh, it's easy to meme her and make fun of her and have, you know, make some, you know, kind of attacks about her personality. But her real record is abysmal, as you've pointed out, whether it's the illegal immigration, the failure to follow through, uh, the fact that, you know, Joe Biden blatantly stated that he hired Ka Kamala Harris because she was basically a diversity, equity, and inclusion hire. He wanted to hire a black woman or a person, a minority woman. But, you know, look, every woman feels that way. You know, you want to make sure that you are not that diversity hire. I know that's how I've always felt when I was the first partner in my law firm, all those things. I was like, but, be, but I think Trump needs to be careful here because we need to really focus on her record. Mm. And I think it's important because her record is terrible. She cites- I would never say she's a DEI hire. Some she people would the know. Ministry of, of Gaza of, that was coming from Hamas for, you know, the, the casualties and what happened in, in Gaza the other day, uh, instead of citing, you know, with UN, and he, which is not as much more credible, but more credible, <laughs> uh, credible sources. What she is, the bottom line. Pause it. Hold on. Can we just stop right there? It's like, she couldn't even come up with any other credible sources. And as soon as she said like other numbers, she realized like, oh, they're all in agreement. And um, I don't believe that they're credible either. Yeah, so yeah. the UN, that's so funny. Yeah, like, no, they, it's like when you literally like, when you just learn your talking points by rote and you don't know what they mean, and if you venture off the path just a little bit, you get really lost. Yeah, don't she, go off the garden path. She didn't get the memo that the UN is also canceled and also anti-Semitic, uh, and uh, they want they love Hamas. And I would have Hamas loved numbers. Kudlow to go. Where, what? Where do you get your sources on? Because the Israeli government also acknowledges. I mean, maybe thing. there should be a law that, like, you, you know, you should maybe you have to refer to a source on things like this if you're going to, you know. I only reject sources. <laughs> I don't actually Late cite sources. sources. I was like, but be, but I think Trump needs to be careful here because we need to really focus on her record, mm. and I think it's important because her record is terrible. She cites wrong information. Her terrible take on Hamas. She cited the ministry. Of, of Gaza of, that was coming from Hamas for you know the, the casualties and what happened in, in Gaza the other day, uh, instead of citing you know with UN and he, which is not as much more credible but more credible. Whoopsie. Uh, credible sources. <laughs> what she is the bottom line to me, Larry, is she's uninformed and she's lazy and she's just oh, going to go out there and try to run this fluff <laughs> campaign. I think the best attack on her is going to go at her on substance because mm. she doesn't have any. No, she, I agree. You scratch the surface with her, you get no, more surface. No, I agree. Look, I don't I don't know if she she herself was a so-called DEI pick as Veep. I, I don't know that. I have not said that, and, and I'm not going to say that. I do know that in addition to all of her economic uh, mistakes and open border mistakes uh, and foreign policy mistakes, um, I do know that she is a supporter of DEI across the board, mm. and DEI is having a very bad influence throughout America. Pat Fallon, I want to okay, bring in. There you go. So, DEI sympathetic. So even Kudlow won't say. I mean, it is, again, aside from, I mean, she's not, she's really throwing out the entire, like Kamala Harris is lazy? Like, where's the evidence that Kamala Harris is lazy? Yeah. Um, Lazily citing uh, Hamas. Uh, yeah. Palestinian numbers. She's, she's lazy and a DEI hire. Uh, aside from the idea that there is no such thing as a DEI hire, there is only basically opening the doors to people who have had it historically shut. That's the difference. Because no one says... Kamala Harris's VP that she's picking is a DEI hire, although everybody knows exactly the people who are in the running because they all meet a specific profile. Nobody's saying Gretchen Whitmer anymore, and it's not because she's not the best candidate, because 
Most people think she probably is. Right. She's in a, uh, a, a Midwestern swing state. She is pushing uh, the, uh, uh, the Democrats' biggest issue. She is handily uh, taking care of, of people in there. Nobody's had more success than her as a governor, short of maybe, or in turning around to state, you know, she's turned around Michigan more than, than Walls had to with Minnesota. Minnesota's Minnes- already there. Walls may have gotten a lot of the stuff through, but he's not in a swing state in the way that she is. Right. But she's not being considered seriously by anybody because Harris has to do a DEI pick. Yeah. There's, there's no black candidate who's being considered for vice president, but uh, Wesley from, uh, from uh, uh, where is he, from Maryland, uh, Wesley Moore, Wes Moore yeah. uh, is um, also a governor who should be in the mix, but he's not going to be because this is a DEI pick. Yeah. But nobody calls it a DEI pick when it's a white guy. Or a white woman, for that matter, because Claudia Tenney there says that when she has been, what did she start off with saying? When she's been in she's power. She's the first woman law partner, partner at her law, law partner. partner. Yeah. She needs to know that she was not a DEI hire. I want to know, uh, Representative Tenney, how do you know that? How do you yeah. know that? How do you know that you were the most qualified person for the job? Because mm. if Kamala Harris, who was the district attorney in San Francisco, who was the attorney general in California, who was then the senator from California, who was then the vice president for nearly four years, is not qualified and is a DEI candidate or was a DEI VP, even if you take out that part, then how do you know that you were not a DEI? Well, I could tell you this. She doesn't. There was a DEI hire at that law firm. Right. She may not have been it. She may not have been the first woman who was there. But I can 100% assure you that that law firm said, hey, guys, and I do mean guys, <laughs> we probably need a woman uh, here. Yeah, right. That conversation 100% right. happened at that law firm. I can 100% guarantee you that. That someone said, and I can also guarantee you that that conversation happened at the law school she attended. She may not have been that person, but somebody was. Right. And she would not have been there had that person not, that conversation not taken place. Yeah. And I mean, the, what are the, he, he also says like DIs has such a negative effect throughout the country. That's just not true. Like you can have, uh, well, what about about what's happening with uh, the airplanes? Right. Well, exactly, right? The pilots. Like, be specific about that. What do you mean? Um, I, I, I think like that's completely over. I, I asked on Twitter, like, does anybody, do you ha- experience DEI on your job and what's your job? And really the only people who come in to uh, across the concept are like IT people. Yeah, it's silly. Um, and that's because it's very, uh, they have a labor issue because it's too massive. And it's just, stood, and, and it, for the rest of people who are using, deploying it, it's, or it's just a stand-in for racist language about other people. I will also yeah. note that she mentions that she cackles um that's oh that is the that's uh, a hallmark that's for oh the, i like just a saw witch. a report i just saw a report of everything that's happening in australia all the um all the murdoch properties in australia are all talking about the laugh thing yeah they're trying it out there i'm going to save them a little bit of time people are going to be like some people are actually going to take this seriously and go like, don't tell them but it's that's not going to work yeah saying that she laughs too much and they're trying to make a cackle. Who cackles? Witches cackle. Witches cackle. And Cla- uh, that representative was like, and I do not, I do, I have no joy in my life. I'm just fixated on people's genitals in schools. That's what's so interesting about this moment is right. like the Democrats and I give Harris's t- uh, team credit. They're rolling this out uh, offensively. They're running a really strong campaign for the past eight days. Uh, an overall blitz on this front. It's a contrast of positive energy, of inclusivity and broad, just like, let's make things happen for people. Let's look to the future versus this dark fixation on DEI and trans kids. And let's be in your home and let's be in your family. Like they are drawing that contrast really well. And the more you focus on how she laughs and has fun, the more joyless and dark you look. And the more they don't look like uh, joyless cat ladies. Right, right. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.